about black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Reality simple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Peace forever and always. I'm your brother, Talik Even Raw. This is the Reality Temple on Earth. And I'm here with my brother, Zaki Baruti. Did I say that correctly, sir? Yeah, that. You did state that correctly. Yes, sir. And I'm here at the uh, 85th anniversary celebration of the birthday of Malcolm X. And uh, I'm here with one of the brothers that uh, I admire, that I grew up with when I was a young man. He's one of the pillars of the of St. Louis community and perhaps the nation. And uh, Brother Zaki, could you introduce yourself again to my audience as well as tell, because I'm pretty sure a lot of my audience don't, are not familiar with your organization, and, ex and also explain to us the importance of Malcolm, to remember Malcolm, and uh, black unity in general. All right, first and foremost, let me give praise to the creator for allowing me to be interviewed by you. And yes, sir. And I want to just thank you for allowing my uh, the opportunity to share our thoughts uh, or my thoughts with your audience. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Zaki Baruti. I'm President General of the Universal African People's Organization, which was founded on April 4th, 1989, here in the city of St. Louis, Missouri. And we were founded as an extension of my candidacy for governor of the state of Missouri in 1984 and 1988. And uh, based on the principles of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, our organization, those pillars of his uh, philosophical thoughts uh, are the underpinnings of our organization. But when we went forward, we made a commitment to celebrate yearly the life and legacy of Brother Malcolm X, also known as El Haas, Malik El Shabazz, as well as Brother uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and also the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. In choosing Malcolm, we chose him because he represents the best of the qualities of manhood for us as a race of people. He had a very powerful international perspective with, with which all of us should have in terms of understanding that our lives are interconnected with the people on the continent of Africa, uh, what happens in Nairobi, or Kenya, or in Johannesburg, South Africa, or in Libya, or in Senegal, is directly uh, or indirectly, shall I say, have an impact on our sexual of people. So we have to be based on the principle that we want the total liberation of Africa, Africa for the Africans, as uh, Brother and Honorable Marcus Garvey used to teach, as well as Malcolm Chris also. And also Malcolm represents a, a trend of thought that as a people, we have to maintain our human rights. And that's one of the yes, things sir. that we love about Malcolm because he took uh, the struggle of civil rights to a higher plane in terms of the call for human rights, as well as his desire to internationalize what was happening to blacks here in America on an international scale to the United Nations. So that's why we say salute to Malcolm. Also, Malcolm rep represents a, a transition that many young people uh, who are facing so many negative realities that hopefully he can learn from because he went from actually a hustler, a, a drug pusher, a uh, just, you know, a person who ended up being incarcerated to coming out of prison through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be on the world's, uh, uh, on the world stage in terms of articulating the hurt and the pain of our people sojourn here in America. So that's why uh, those are some of the reasons why we celebrate the life of X and Malcolm X. So do you think that we can progress without black unity? Can we progress without black unity? Yes, sir. No, we cannot uh, move forward without black unity. Unity has to come in order for us to overcome the many uh, problems that beset our people, both externally as well as internally. And when we say externally, we're saying the problems uh, emanate from a white racist uh, system of power and control over 
our people here in this country and many times all across the world. So in order to counter that, we must have unity. Unity on the basic level locally, uh, unity uh, on a regional level throughout the country, uh, uh, unity nationally. Yes, sir. With one call, and uh, the call that we as an organization put out is that, first of all, we need to be speak that there is one God, as Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey used to say, one goal, which he used to say one aim, and that should be the liberation of us as a people, and one destiny. And that destiny at some point in time will be the complete liberation of our people across planet Earth. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate uh, you taking the time and giving us a few minutes of... Peace be upon all ways. This is your brother, Charlie Eden Ra. This is another edition of the Reality Step on Earth. And I'm here with my brother, Asma Muhammad. Oh, you know, now y'all know I can run my mouth, but I'm so close to standing to this brother. This is, my, this, is, this is my training ground. I'm here in the nation of Islam once again. And this is the brother that I worked with when I was 18 years old. Man, I'm so close to this brother I'm born. I, yes, sir. And, and I, I'm, look, I'm very choked up, guys. I'm very nervous. This is Brother Akbar Muhammad. He's the international representative of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Brother that I'm, I'm proud of and happy with. Uh, he's a, well, a perfect example of how a young man growing up. Brother Akbar. Brother Akbar. Yes. I mean, I'm just so choked up, brother. It's so nice to meet you, man. Well, it's good to see you again. Yes, sir. And, uh, yes, sir. be able to talk to you. Yes, sir. Well, you know, you know, right. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. goes to show you that this is brother for real. My parents, this brother has not seen me in years, but as soon as I requested an interview, I got this call. Oh, Y'all just don't know. Black unity, brother. Brother, I'm brother, this is what I want to, like to ask you before, you know, I just wanted to make it short because I'm pretty sure you're a busy brother. And uh, I would just like you to, to tell my audience the importance of it is for black unity, for us to come together as a people in order to progress and do what we need to do, like you said today in, in the legacy. I'm going to get that, that this, this brother's uh, legacy today was on legacy and to, so that we can have and pass down a beautiful and wonderful legacy to our children. Yes. Well, first of all, I think that, you know, when you go through this life and you reach a certain point, you realize that there's always ups and downs and there's things that you agree and disagree with individuals, but it should never disrupt the unity that we need as a people because of our history of struggle. And we have to work through our problems. It's like a married couple trying to work through their problems that they have. And uh, it doesn't go good all the time. Yes, sir. But unity and the ability to work together is most important for our people in America. And right now, there's a wedge being uh, driven uh, between the Christian and the Muslim community over what's happening in the world. Yes, there's another wedge being driven about Barack Obama. Some black people are showing dissatisfaction with him, but they got to give him a chance, as we have to give each other a chance, yes, sir. and find things that we can agree upon mutually that will help benefit our people and to work for a better life for our people in America. And the only way we can do it is by working together. We can't do it by falling out with each other and yes, help everybody going their own way. But we got to find a way to work in unity because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, in your unity, that is your strength. Do you think that it's, that it's possible to progress without black unity? No, you cannot progress without black unity. It's like asking me, uh, can a, a family make progress for their children if the mother and the father are divided and always battle with each other? They can't make progress. Yes, and then the children become uh, divided. They become uh, confused over who they think is right and who they think is wrong. But they got to find a way to work together so that those children can progress. Yes, sir. And before, uh, I'd like to thank you for this interview. Before uh, I close, I would like for you to tell the, the, the listening audience really quick about uh, your experience with me as a young man in the nation as well. Right. right. Well, first of all, I want to say that you know, all of the young brothers like yourself, they yes, young man. I always try to set some examples and give them goals to reach and uh, let them know that discipline in their personal life is the key to their success, regardless of where they go in life, and that they have to have some principles that they live by. Yes, sir. They can't be, you know, on the street today, you find people that will do anything. There's no limit. They don't have no line that they draw, you know. Um, they cross any line. Yes, sir. But at least when you were a young man in the nation, 
but I tried to instill with all those young brothers that came in with you that you have to draw a line. A certain thing that you will not do. I started something as simple as once you became a Muslim, you do a line. You wouldn't just go back and eat pork. That's doing a line. It's like a principal position. Then when it comes to the abuse and robbing and beating your uh, people and uh, abusing your woman, you have to draw a line and say there's just certain things that I'm not going to do. And so if you instill those principles of discipline and draw a line of what you will and will not do, then God can bless you with success as you move through life. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank Bill Akbar. This was and is the reality of Temple on Earth. You know, it's just like a drug addiction. Europeanness and white supremacy is an addiction. Yes. So we have to add one to the fellowships of Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to add European Anonymous. <laughs> We're going to have to add European Anonymous, a 12-step program right. on how to, to, to recover from being a European addict. That's because right. that's what we have become. That's right. We are so addicted to Europeans, we have become, we don't realize that it's a disease. The same way a junkie or, or, or a drug addict does not realize that his behavior from using drugs has become a disease. Mm. And so it's not the individual because people are really good and are really good by nature. Yes. However, you know, you know, when you are in a disease state, you know, like I said, the disease is cunning, baffling, and it's insidious. Yes. It makes you believe that what you are doing is right when it can be totally wrong. Right. And so we got to go over and over and, and over and over and over again, you know, and it, it, it you know, You know, I knew that when I started coming out teaching about this here, um, I was going to get a backlash. I knew that. Of course. And in the very beginning of it, in the very beginning of it, I said a lot of things. I said those things actually for the shock therapy <laughs> because I wanted to actually see what was going to come out of it. And, and I got more than what I was in store for. But it gave us a really good view to see the brothers in the community and just see how we look at each other. Just mm. see how we respect women. Uh -huh. And boy, it brought out a lot of hatred for the women. Yes. I'm, I'm sad to say it brought out a lot of hatred for the women. And so they think Brother Tahuti is causing a gender-specific war. No, I'm only pointing out what's already there. That war has been going on for a thousand, uh, four to five, six thousand years now. You know, and the only way we're going to reverse it is uh, we got, we got to become very evolved as men. Mm -hmm. If you're saying you're God, then God damn it, act like that's God right. don't see, see. That's a the patriarchy. That's the patriarchy's concept of God, controlling. Right. You know, uh, jealous competition. You know. God does not need to control anything. God <laughs> is. God is. You mean, and when, when I mean by that, that's just the state of being in bliss. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens in this life is a play of the consciousness. It's a play of the mind. You see what I'm saying? Everything that we see, we hear, we taste, we touch is the play of the mind. Mm -hmm. You see, so all of this was the play of the creator or the creatrix, you see? And so, uh, wow, I kind of lost my train of thought on that one. But you know something? However, yeah. uh, uh, I'm listening. Yeah, you know what, what you were saying about earlier, about how how our, our mentality, we, we, we've become a dark version of the oppressor. And the, I mean, what's a better way of keeping myself as, an, as a conqueror or an oppressor alive than placing in my victim my mentality? So when I listen to 
many of these so-called like black power, black conscious, black liberation, whatever, when I hear these persons speak, if I take away the so-called blackness, which did not come from us, that was something that was forced upon us by the oppressor. I, I don't know. You are, you're, you, you have a, a lot of knowledge under your belt from, but from my studies, blackness or, or we as a people calling ourselves based on some color, I don't know. Yes, and I can't believe you. you made, I can't believe you. Made, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peace and love in all ways. I'm your brother, the mighty angel Slim Nelson. I'm here at the celebration of Dr. Uh, Pastor Ray Hicks. I'm so nervous and I'm out. I'm, I'm sick of Dr. Dr. Hagen is sick. But I'm here with Dr. Umar Johnson. Just heard him speak. And as you know, brother, uh, Thank you so much, Seven. I always looking for black unity and that spirit. And brother, would you like to say something to my audience, the YouTube community? Oh, sure. Peace and love, brothers and sisters out there in the internet world. <laughs> Dr. Umar Johnson, yes, Prince sir. of Pan Africanism. Yes, sir. I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri, celebrating my big brother. Pastor Dr. Ray Hagan's 15 years of doing it big with the African Village, so we came out today to show love big to him. Whole cool. congregation, a lot of good people out here in St. Louis. So it's just been a lot of love. I'm just trying to spread that good gospel of Garveyism mm -hmm. and Pan Africanism. <laughs> We're gonna keep on doing it. Pan Wheels fall off. And cop the new book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Brother yeah. Umar, and we'll okay. see you on the flip side. Peace and always. Thank you, Brother Kali Stephen Brown, and I'm here with the brother. Right, right. You know, and this is not all that bickering and back and forth crap. 
hate to see you. Not everybody agree on opinion That's all right. the time, but as long as the core principles is right, you 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 all good. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so you say something you're gonna do? You wanna highlight them? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a, a quick uh, collab video on a, on a particular subject, and the subject or the topic that I've chosen. And yeah, brother, <laughs> this is his idea. Don't be, so women, don't say nothing to me. It's him. And brother, just like we did in a in a more a prior video, except this one is live together. Uh, I'm going to the topic I've chosen is it is natural for women to be gold diggers. Now, are y'all ready? I'm gonna kick this off spend a few minutes, then I'm, we're going to bring it to conclusion uh, with Brother Philip. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> I'm listening. Now, of course, when we talk about gold diggers, we never make reference to men as being gold diggers. Of course, it's always women, but in the same, at the same time, you have males that also participate in the same type of behavior or activity. But they can't be gold diggers. But I, I would tell you that it is natural for women to be gold diggers and you should not be shamed when you understand and put that into context. We're going to do it like this. In the animal kingdom, and we, we will use an animal for an example. Let's say, uh, let's just say deer. Now, when a female deer or a doe looks for a mate, she looks for the best. She does not look for the weakest. She does not, she looks for the strongest male that she can find because it is important for her to find the strongest male to mate with so she can produce the strongest children. Also, in most instances, the male is the protector of the female. So the woman or the female is looking for somebody to protect her offspring. You cannot expect a weak deer or weak male to accomplish this task. This is also important as far as the DNA gene pool when the animals begin to reproduce it guarantees a strong gene pool as far as the... Greetings folks, King Mike. You know me from Drive Time, here with a historic moment. We got angels fucked up over there with me too. My counterpart, we got Pastor Daryl Moment from Old Mountaintop Baptist Church. We just did an uh, interview with him on the Council of Twelve show not too long ago. Angel and I are working on a little movie script, a 10 minute production that we hope to get on uh, YouTube here soon. And we're going to submit it to the film festival. It's called Resurrection Malcolm Meets Mark. Malcolm is reincarnated and you know, resurrected in the body of angels, and Martin is resurrected in my body, and that's the moment he is. That's going to be Ralph David Adonai. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, folks. We'll talk to you next time. t out. How you doing, brothers and sisters? This is your brother, Kaliki Murad. And, of course, as you see, this is a different uh, background for the reality of on Earth. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. Visiting Brother Tima, like I said, I was going to because I think that my visiting this brother is very important, and we are going to accept the example of what we as a people should be doing. We need to uh, compromise our differences for a common goal and purpose. All of us claim that we love black people, that we um, care about our future generation. This is the beginning. Black unification. Without black unification, there's no happiness. So if you don't want to unite with your brothers and sisters, work with your brothers and sisters, you might as well just be happy and stop complaining and be uh, content in the condition that you're in and uh, continue to view uh, YouTube as nothing but entertainment. I don't view Black Stroke as entertainment. And Brother T-Mont doesn't uh, view 
YouTube and Black Struggle as entertainment. This is very serious business for not only ourselves, but our future generations. So that's why I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, with wonderful company, Brother Timon and the Brother Minister here. So I'm going to be here for uh, about a week, and we're going to see what we can get done and uh, just enjoy each other's company. Until I see you again on the channel, uh, this is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. Peace forever and always. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. The minister always got words. <laughs> I know I got to repent. I got to repent for eating all this good food. <laughs> this food is off the chain. T Mod brought me here, and I tell you, I might have to go on a fast for about 40 days. But listen, I'm so proud of T Mod what he's doing, trying to get the truth, not just the truth out there, but trying to change lives, not trying to build a reputation, mm -hmm. but trying to get the gospel, the word of God, that to change lives out. It's by any means is necessary. Mm -hmm. YouTube is very powerful, but one thing I know, that the Spirit of God can go through the television camera, your computer, and change your life right where you sit as you listen to this man of God and these men of God talk. God can do the impossible. Make it very possible. Don't you give up and don't you give in. And please, I know you have. Don't you ever give out. Pass the moment. We'll see you later. <laughs> In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, this is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another edition of the uh, Reality Stream on Earth. Uh, I'm in the uh, home, uh, or the house, the office, of our brother, Pastor Ray Hagen. As you know, I've been on a whirlwind tour trying to show us and be an example of what black unity is. I've been... Uh, greeted by our brother Sarah Sousay, some of y'all know him. I met with him. Another popular brother on YouTube, Brother Tima, I met with him. I just had on the radio broadcast, Brother J.T. Riley One. I've been visiting uh, the Nation of Islam. I missed the interview with Brother Louis Farrakhan, but maybe next time. And now I'm here with our brother and pastor, Ray Hagen, uh, which I'm going to tell you, Pastor, that you have been uh, a great influence on me in my evolution in what we call black consciousness. And I want to tell you that uh, I appreciate you. And many of us, no matter what is said out there in YouTube land outside, no matter, there are those who appreciate you. And you mentioned today in your speech that you do not want to leave this life without feeling uh, that your work has been in vain. Your work has not been in vain. As long as I exist, as long as those who listen to exist, not enough said. We know and we appreciate you, so you you can rest in peace. <laughs> not not <laughs> premature. <laughs> not premature. We need you. I go to where the, the knowledge is. Y'all understand that now? Some people look at me like I'm some big shot know it all. But believe, believe this. I go to where the knowledge begins at the root. This brother here has been doing this a very long time. Those who are in the nation of law, there's a lot of knowledge out there. Y'all listen. Because you pop on this ego, something crap, water, to, all knowledge is good. And with that said, this is my brother, Pastor Ray Hagen. Brother, can I shake your hand? Man, man. See, that's good to that y'all. You're a test of Brother, Pastor, can you explain or uh, talk to my audience and tell them how important it is for black unity? Well, black unity is the key, brother, for yes, whatever we're going to do. Uh, and when I say black unity, um, I mean, of course, unity among the descendants of the mother of Africa. Yes, sir. Of the mother, motherland of we call Africa. Um, a lot of us talk it, you know, but we don't live it. And it's important to live unity, but you can't live unity if your heart is not right. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Um, in fact, I've actually had some people say to me they don't want to hear anything about unity. That's right. You know, uh, if you don't want to hear anything about unity, brother, then we, we, we're not on the same page. It's real simple, man. Um, in order to be, and you, the word unity also means oneness, you know, a connectedness. And the, the important thing that's necessary for that to happen is collective consciousness. Yes, sir. we got to be on the same page in our thinking, 
uh, we as a people, we as black people, man, we don't even have a national mission statement. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, if we had a national mission statement, man, at least if we all wake up in the morning, we'd all be focused on what it is we're supposed to be doing. And as a result of us not knowing what it is we're supposed to be doing, you got various ones out here doing their own thing. Well, what is your thing? You, right. know, uh, you know, we need to get in, in touch with our spirit. We need to tap into the purpose of the creator, creator's force of the universe. We need to tap into that energy and find out, why did I come out of my mother's womb? Why am I, why am I alive? Why am I on this planet? You follow what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, once we know that, thing, then we can begin to appropriate that purpose in our lives. Our pur we, none of us came out of our mother's womb man, to, to uh, carry out the works of this thing. Uh, or division, or, 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 or negative energy. Uh, people who do that are people who don't know why they came out of their mother's And they need to slow down, chill, and search themselves, and find out how they can contribute to the unifying of ourselves. Uh, unless that happens, man, we're just going to keep burning, you know, dancing around the fires of of European races. You know, uh, I'm going to make this video sort of short. And thank you for uh, uh, coming to the rally this time. Thank you, brother. Um, first, I want to say thank you to those who supported me, supported yes, us. us. I mean, let me say support us. When I started doing these uh, videos, it wasn't with malice or any financial motivation. It was doing it because for years, I've seen our people be manipulated, whether it be in print, whether it be music, movies, or even in school. And what kicked it off for me that I had kept seeing stories where people who were white, and I'm going to say that they were racist, yeah. because you lie on a black male or black woman when it comes to crimes, where we're basically lying, saying things about our people, and the reaction from the media and from the citizens were very visceral. Matter of fact, the very first video I ever did was about... Bethy Starr, if you don't remember who she was, she was the 26, I think 27 year old woman. She was deaf. And I want y'all to rem remember this part. She was deaf. She put ass on her face and yeah. said a fictitious black woman did it. The media, YouTube, and y'all, there's some videos still out here on YouTube about it, called black women all kinds of derogatory names. And even some, and I, and I use this term loosely, brothers was joining in, piling in on it. Knowing that black women and black men for the last 40 years have been divided by outside forces. So when a sister heard a black man refer to a slut or bitch, all of us got lumped into that group. When I saw the reaction from Oprah Winfrey, because the sister was supposed to be on an Oprah Winfrey show, but thank God some smart thinking white man said, wait a minute, if she had ass in her face, the very same thing I said in my video, why was her eyes damaged? I wear glasses. I know if your face get wet, water's going to get on your eyes at some mm -hmm. point. It's going to get it. There's no way around it. So what I did was I got off my butt and said, no, I got to speak to this because we, whether, whether we have issues with black men and black women, there was uh, people out there just berating our sisters. And from that day on, it started to flow. It just, it kept com it just kept coming. And what happened was I started talking about politics because a lot of our people have been manipulated into voting one party. A lot of us have spent our money in, in unwise fashions. So I spoke about that. But after a while, brother can tell you, I was barely getting 30 views on my, right. on my channel right. until I just kept pushing through. Then all of a sudden I started getting the hate from the tried and true races. You know the brothers and I, I'm the see. I keep saying brothers, right. yeah, but I, I refer to everybody like that. But the, those white men and women who don't want us to have a voice, they want us to stay in the slave masters. You know, they just sit in that type of uh, place where you need to know your know your place. You can't speak about anything. I was getting death threats, and I told brothers to support yeah. me. And they's like, oh, Harvey, you ain't getting no death threats. Because at that time, I didn't know enough about the video software. Right. And then after a while, I can't remember, one of the YouTubers came and he said, why don't you invest in some of this video capture software? And once I started doing that, a lot of those men and women was making those threats. They stopped. Huh. But guess who took their place? Self-hating black men and black women, as I like to call handkerchief heads. 
A lot of these brothers and sisters want to become YouTube partners. So what they do, they change the tone of their videos. They start attacking one another because people love to see black people attack each other. It's like a, a sport to them. Mm -hmm. You see all the booty shaking videos up here. You see the fight videos. You see the uh, the uh, the, the um, black men defend that white girl when she was calling us niggas and everything. People like that. Those videos are in the thousands, even in millions of hits. But brothers like us, we just speaking about the things we observe. Yes. I be probably got maybe 400, 600, 700 subscribers. That's too much. Mm -hmm. So after a while. Brothers and sisters said, well, I want those subscribers, so how am I going to get them away from them? Mm. I'm going to go out there and make a dummy channel, or I'm going to say Harvey Superboy, or any other brothers out here like ourselves, or sisters talking about, say, he said something about black women. Knowing damn well, I never said anything black about black right. women. Then they might say, brother, Harvey don't like your channel, so he comes in, and then they want to go to super pro-black stuff and don't even understand that you have to have a... Uh, uh, a plan when you talk about overdoing the country or being a revolutionary. Yeah. So all of a sudden, everybody's jaw jacking with each other, and I'm sitting back like, you guys n don't understand. We just becoming entertainment for the YouTube community. Yeah. But then when I go into a different direction and say, let me try a different way of speaking to y'all, then that's even worse. Yeah. Now the other day, if you guys don't know, a brother, um, like I said, I use these terms loosely, and on the spot, we all know him as what's that? Uh, painless. We know he made a series of videos. Attacking the Trayvon Martin, attacking other brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, he joined people who were racist in getting out videos false flagged or terminated. Well, I came across a video another uh, YouTuber had mirrored where he said he admitted he was cooning and buffooning. He was tap dancing. And one of my subscribers um, to my new channel said, you know, you should forgive me. I said, no, that's the problem with us as a people. Every time we do something stupid or dangerous to each other, we forgive them. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't advance because we keep giving people the room to keep making mistakes. Other communities, if somebody make a mistake like that, they kick them out. No white man is going to let another white man who's defending blacks come huh. back into the community. He's done. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's just trashed to him. When we do something, somebody kill, rob, or whatever, come on back, brother. We pray for you. We're going to let you back into the fold. We talk about what the man is doing, but we doing the stuff to ourselves. If you disagree with me, you have that right. But don't come to my channel, any other channel, cursing or making threats or making it personal. If you think I'm wrong, put a rebuttal video up. Right, make video make response. Make a video response. But when you don't put your image up or you're not a consistent YouTube viewer, in my mind, you are a troll. Now, a lot of y'all hate when I say that, but let's that's, that's, that's look at it. Let's Some go, people. Let's go a little stronger than that. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I, first of all, before I get started, I want to say that I thank these brothers for having me on their uh, their, their channel and sharing this this form with me. <coughs> Normally, I do things like this only if it's a commercial, you know, for my for my program, Keeping Real Law Project, but. Tonight, because I, I, I've gotten to know these brothers over the past three or four hours, and I know that their heart is sincere, you're going to always have cowards mm. amongst us. <coughs> you're going to always have those individuals. We've had them. See, Stephen Fetch's grandson is live right now. Mm. Uncle Tom's great-grandson is still around. They call him Michael Steele. They call him <laughs> J.C. Watts. They call him, they call him, uh, 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 Black Hollywood. <laughs> you call, they call him, they call him the, the Congressional Black Caucus. Right. They call him the, the, NAACP. The, the NAACP and the Urban League. Mm. Uh, they, that's what they call him now. It goes by different titles, but he still acts the same as he did in, in slavery. Remember, every every slave revolt that was ever the ha hatched was was betrayed from within, yes. not from without. It wasn't the white folks to stop Nat Turner. It was black folks yes. to stop Nat Turner. Wasn't nobody? Didn't nobody? White folks didn't tell on Denmark Vesey. Black folks told on Denmark yes. Vesey. Gabriel Prosser, the first known slave revolt over here, uh -huh. was betrayed by black folks. Mm. The Black Panther Party was betrayed by black folks. Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey, 
uh, 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 Malcolm X. Yes, Dr. everybody. King. Dr. King. Dr. King, everybody. Now, let me tell you something. Tell us. We can no longer afford yeah. these handkerchief heads. <laughs> we can't afford them. In every other society, traitors are dealt with accordingly. Mm. The worst offense you can commit in the military is to be a traitor. It's mm. punishable by death. Yes. Mm. If we're a nation within a nation, why don't we have that same right to implement the punishments as we see fit? Mm. And until we adopt that, that, that mindset, we're going to have people who continually uh, disrespect our community yes, sir. And, and, and sell us out to the devil. And I did say the devil. I don't care who don't like it. Call me. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it's it. my chief wife. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't mince words. See, I am not trying to be politically correct. I don't care who get upset. Call me. If you want a death threat, come holler at me. <laughs> I got something for you when you come to my door. Now, leaving that off. We have been pontificating, wringing our hands, allowing other people to define us. Yeah. The culture and way of life in themselves. And me looking at it as an intellect, a person that a, per, a person that uses reason and th thought. I look at Mr. Tmot and he has knowledge, wisdom, understanding. But when he used it to belittle brother one time, mm -hmm. I cut him loose. And when when I see brothers like you hang around them and give honor to them, I I, I got I, I got to bash you. I got to. That's me. You know, so I'm gonna tell you how I feel. You might not like how I said it, but that's how I felt. Cause you gotta look at this. Everything y'all old school do, we watch. You make one mistake, it's over with us. We don't give we won't give up no. It ain't no second chances. See, I was raised in a, in, in prison. Well, before I went to prison, a man had no rights in which I was bound to respect. I ain't have no respect for no man. These dudes in prison had to show me about respect. I had to learn how to respect everybody. White, black, Hispanic. I got to know how to And I learned that there's only two types of people. It's, it's nasty white people. It's nasty black people. When when I made that video about you, Mr. t Mott, and Mr. Um, Symbolic, the only person that stand on their they convictions and didn't, and didn't come, come at me was Mr. Symbolic. And, and when I come up, I'm going to buy Mr. Symbolic a year supply, a Tylenol, and some a year supply for Icy Hot. I'm going to get him straight. That's my dog. But, uh, <laughs> but, that, but uh, Mr. T. Mai, I'm telling you straight up, that's how I feel about him. When he made that video about them brothers, and he sent mm -hmm. out there, you seen him, he was befriending them brothers. You know what I'm saying? I don't see if he's talking to them in a, in a stern way, but he's talking to them grinning, and, you know, and these brothers feeling comfortable around them. And when you know when brothers drink, you, you, are, you is me, and I'm you. If you, 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 you was right there, you know how brothers drink, and they feel comfortable. Yeah, they're going to talk. They're going to they gonna get loose. Then he take that video to manipulate and make a brother look bad. That's what I don't like. You know what I mean? I don't, it ain't the person, it's the mentality of the person. It's when a person like T might say that other people have no rights in which he are bound to respect because he's supposed to be a high intellect. So me, I am an intellect killer. I like all people that are smart. If you're smart, come my way. You know what I'm saying? You want to be smart, you want to be a smart ass or talk to somebody in despair to slide in a belittling way. See, the, so a lot of brothers don't know how to talk to a brother. They know how to talk at a brother. They can tell the brother they have power. They can talk to their brother their hypothesis, their thesis, their opinion, their assessment. They can teach their scrutinization of the brother on one hand, but on the other hand, they want to talk to him in despair to slide in a belittling way. You know what I'm saying? You want to look down at me. You want to think, because I got gold in my mouth, my hair long, I'm simple. You know what I mean? And my thing is, the old school got to realize when a young brother ain't hating on you, sometimes he have to give you a checkup for the negative and say, hey, brother, you hang around bad company. I was raised in, the, in prison. I was raised where it's a whole pack of motherfucking booty bandits over here. I was raised, and, and you was probably, you was raised in prison, but I was at a baby, meaning from 18 to 26. I'm mentally, as a, I'm growing up in this, in this area, in the jungle. And then at the same time, I never, ever been locked up before. I've never been locked up in my life. So I get thrown in prison 13 and a half years, my first motherfucking time. So that's why I be straight up with these young brothers. You know what I'm saying? I know how I feel to get my ass whooped. I know how I feel to get, get gassed. I know how I feel to get beat down by 18, eight, excuse me, eight rednecks, kicked in the face, chewing the back in the face, and still say, crap, I'll fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? I done been through it. 
I can get, I can touch more young dudes in one day than all, everybody. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, my thing is this. This is what I promote. I don't promote, I, I love my brother. I love my brother more than anything. But at the same time, it's fake black, it's real black. It's fake white, it's real white. So I can't surrogate. We can't. We can't say we are gonna be over, over here in this sediment, and they gonna be over here in this sediment. What we have to do is, if we gonna break up, I would rather break up with all the real people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I would rather have 15 percent of real and 85 percent of that fake over there. You know what I'm saying? Then have a, a, a house full of. That's how. That's how uh, Malcolm X got killed. You know what I mean? <coughs> like you right. got him, cause that's how they can cloak. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So my thing is, I'm not against none of y'all. I don't get. But my thing is. When I see you say it, right, and because you make friends with them later on down the line, you know what I'm saying, but you still said that. You still said it out your mouth, you know what I mean? And when you said that, and when you and when you said that and you was taking up for them, I said, okay, you know, I'm going to type, oh, you want some? Give you some. You want some? I got some for you, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got a right. bucket full of middle fingers for everybody, you know what I'm saying? That's how I am. I'm the type right. of person, I don't care what nobody think of me. If every white man in this world hated JT, I'm still going to slob on both pillows. Both of them. Be slobbing on both of them. I don't care. And any black person, I don't care, you know what I'm saying? I'm the type of person, I like to be by myself. I'm a cave villain. I like to be by, I could be in, by myself for years and don't come out, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, these young dudes, these young guys, I here don't have no cheer, no 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 remorse. These young guys got to hear from somebody that been through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I I didn't got they used to try, on the Department of Correction. They used to trash it out on me. I didn't got hit with the shocker. I didn't got hit with the motherfucking shield. I didn't got hit with the pepper spray, the big gas. I didn't got hit with. I didn't got beat down to I heal. You ever got beat down and put in confinement to your heel? That's some shit. You know what I mean? Oh. And still say crackers, I kill you. You know what I'm saying? They beat me so much that they say they tired of beating me. We tired of beating you, JT. You know what I mean? But this thing, my experiences can help a lot of people. But my thing is, if these older brothers want to make black unity, they can't slip up one time. Because if they slip up one time and these smart. Hold on. Well, I hope that uh, uh, we understand exactly what. Uh, Brother J.K. is saying, and I, I agree with them 100%. I agree with them. There's only two people, and that's the fake and, and the real. And that's what we need today. We need real people. Brother J.K., you back? Yes, sir, I'm back. Okay, you can continue. I'm just telling them that uh, what you're saying is correct. There's, that's that's what, like you're saying. You're saying that you have, that there's only two people in this world. That's the Real in the face. Right, man. I had, man, I used to hate white people. Let me tell you, I used to hate white people so much, I used to hunt them. I, all you had to say, JT, you want to knock out some crackers? Where they at? I hate crackers with bricks, bottles, it don't matter. I, I, I love to see crackers bleed. And I hate them so much. And my principal used to say, JT, you can be the smartest kid in the whole school if you just stop fighting white people. Stop. I had a, I hate for them because I happen to be born in a city where well, they wouldn't even let me be born there. You know what I'm saying? They said they ain't no niggas going to be born at their hospital. And we had to go to another city to be born. You know what I mean? So, I done been, I, I, and, and right now, if you get a, a barber's license right now, it say Imperial Polk County. It don't say Polk County, say Imperial. Mm -hmm. To this day. You know what I'm saying? So, crackers ain't never scared me. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't never had no white friend in my life. The closest to a white friend I ever had was Mr. Symbolic. You know? Mm -hmm. That's the closest to the white friend I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. So, me, I'm like this. I, 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 I used to hate white people, but then I started learning about different things. When I started in prison and I learned about history and stuff, I learned about mm -hmm. stuff like Mr. John Brown, who, who said, man, fuck this, right. this slavery shit. I'm finna fight. He's the one that set off the ride. I mean, if y'all, I mean, it's not the ride, but the Civil War, you know what I'm saying, for Lincoln, but that's a long right. story. But, but um, Mr. J Mr. John Brown, so if I got the, I, I said to myself, damn, I can't kill all crap because I might kill with the John Brown people. And then I got named after, okay, my grandma, my great grandma named Mother, that's our mother of the family. Her her daddy, his name was Joe the Golden. And that's who they named me after. I'm like a third generation, that's what they named me after. So when he was born, I mean excuse me, my granddaddy, my granddaddy didn't know how to do nothing but, but be a sheriff I mean know how to farm and shit. He ain't no shit. So Joe he came and showed my granddaddy how to lay blocks. So that's how my granddaddy survived, you know what I'm saying? Off that love. You know what I'm saying? So me, I had to find out that hey, 
you know, even Joe, even though, you know, I, my granddad was a white Anglo standing from Cox's mouth, you know what I'm saying? I still have to, you know, you know, he was real, you know what I'm saying? So I have to respect that, you know what I'm saying? So I can't, I can't go, when you get consumed by hate, I ain't never had no white friend in my life. When I was in prison, I done had Aaron Nation. Aaron Nation leaders say they wish I was white. They say, I wish you was white, Jake. Dude, you so real. You so real, I wish you was white. They say, if you were white, you would be president. I would have been president. If all, if all all Hillary had to do, uh, Obama wouldn't have been president if it, it was all Hillary had to do was give him 100 grand. He should have been president. You know what I mean? And it's mine's everywhere. I'm just saying it's mine's everywhere. It's mine's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you got to know how to tap into it. And, and these older these older brothers got to realize that these young girls be looking. They be observing. And if you make one slip up, if they see you belittle a brother one time, they ain't going to never trust you. Never. Because we ain't have no father syndrome. So we don't trust right. people like that. So when I see a brother belittle somebody one time, you can make a thousand good videos. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if you got, um, y'all say one bad apple in the bunch. Put some shit in that whole barrel. None of them ain't no good no more. You put one little thing of shit in that whole barrel, none of the apples ain't no good no more. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta keep that stuff covered. You can't be you can't have people that's two faced. You can't have people that that on one hand talk like they got some sense and on the other hand talk like they were only one with some sense. You can't have that. You know what I mean? You, not as leaders. You can't. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to have a, a, a renegade like me say, hell to the law. Right plan, wrong man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have the wrong one. You're going to have me fucked up. Yes, sir. Um, I am Andre Detman, 69, <coughs> student administrator of Actions for the Reality's Temple on Earth. And um, I want to get something real clear <coughs> about what it is me and Talik are doing here. Um, I want people to understand clearly that I was raised majority of my life in a uh, racially mixed environment uh, with different ethnical groups. I grew up in a in an area where my neighbors was of all different kinds of race all my life. Um, at an early age, I went to an all Caucasian school where it was only two black kids in the class and it was a girl and it was a boy and I was the boy and there was another black girl in the class and uh, from growing up and being in, in this type of environment I really didn't realize the reality of the part that racism plays and it's so common it's so common racism is so common that we really can't see it you know it would be just like if people went outside and they studied rocks being on the ground, it was diamonds, and we were so used to it, we wouldn't be able to see the diamonds for what they were because we were so used to seeing them all the time. Well, when it comes to, I'm not comparing racism to diamonds, I'm just using it as an example as far as uh, commonality of, uh, of things that we see so much. Uh, if you take racism out of our everyday experience in life, then our re everyday reality will be a complete shock to people. People wouldn't even know what, what the heck was going on. It would be something different. Racism plays a part in everything we do. That's right. It's in every blade of grass in our reality. I'm not going to say that all white people are racist. Yes. I'm not going to say that all white people are prejudiced. But there is going to come a time in a white person's life where them denying you your equal rights as a human being is going to be presented to them. And somehow, some kind of way, uh, uh, them treating you less of a, uh, how can I say it, an American citizen is going to benefit them. All right? At every point in their life, no matter at what point in their life they go to, it's going to, it's going to be presented to them. And majority of the time, they're going to go along with it because it's going to be in their best interest. And they might not personally like it, but they're going to go, it's going, they're going to go along with it. I want to say that 
should make an ultimate statement. The white man is not the black man's friend. They are our natural enemies. I don't care if if you, this person always been your friend or uh, associate or whatever. These are our natural enemies by nature. And for that reason and that reason alone, we need to be conscious of the reality of what we're going through in this country. Um, I want to say clearly up front, I got a lot of white associates, a lot of Latino associates I talk to. They know I do these videos. And I don't stop for one moment and take in consideration that they might not approve of me doing these videos. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because that don't concern me. Because I'm speaking up for what's true. I'm speaking up for the, the truth. And I'm speaking up for us, our people. And deep down inside, they know. They know this is a reality to what we're doing. Just to get off with the small, fluffy uh, talk, we in bad shape <coughs> in society. We have some screwed up personal relationships amongst each other, and I'm talking about blacks. We have outside forces doing everything they can, even the ones that claim to be uh, 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 not racist and not prejudiced. These people have this ingrained conscience that they have to keep us separated psychologically and, and every way they possibly can. Keep us at a state of distrust all the time from each other. When they come into the equation or when they come into our uh, uh, a realm, in a black person's realm, where it's a group of us, they always try to find a way to keep us separated. To keep our mind going in different directions. They do not want us to be uh, on one accord. That's just what they do. You will see it happen over and over and over again. And Talik know. Talik know how this thing goes down. But a lot of blacks go along with the program. They get sucked into this idea that... Uh, just because a person smiles and grins in your face and uh, offer right. you these little things of uh, tokenism uh, or uh, give, give you money or give you a job that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It exists, man, and it's real. They don't want you to think it's real. See what I'm saying? And if there ever were a devil that walked the face of the earth, it would be the people that run this country, mm. the people that run the world. Because it's the devil. It's not some spirit. It's a man. And it's in the form of a group of people who is willing to do everything it is to stay in power. They will blow this whole damn world up yes, they before will. they even share any equal power. What kind of man? Mm. He will only be the one who got weapons of mass destruction, but can't nobody else have. Mm. If you don't want nobody else to have them, the hell you doing with them? Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do that make sense? <clears throat> I know this video is a little bit off to the side. We ain't got that much room. <laughs> but that's all right because you still hear me. You can still see me. And you and, and I'm quite sure you can follow along with what I'm saying. Um, white supremacy is real. <clears throat> they do not want people from different countries to have the same access to science, to technology, yes. and all these different things because then people will wake up. They don't want people to be like in Korea where they educated themselves to the point where now they know how to make